Hi everybody, my name is Scott Walls. For over 25 years, I've deployed ERP applications for some of the world's largest organizations. During that time, I've taught thousands of people just like you how to discover, use, deploy, and support Oracle's back office software. This lesson walks through the purchase agreements application within Procurement Cloud. Please note that this lesson is part of the agreements course found within the procurement functional area under the discover menus. But before we get started, did you know that you could earn free discovery badges for display on your LinkedIn profile just by watching videos like this one? You can. Stay until the end of this video and I'll show you how. Okay, so let's get started. Key topics for this lesson are as follows. What is a purchase agreement? Purchase agreement types. When are agreements created? How are agreements created? Who or what creates agreements? And lastly, why are agreements created? First topic. So what is a purchase agreement? So if you go to Wikipedia, purchase agreement is an agreement between a buyer and a seller of real estate, property, company, stock, or assets. The person, company, or other legal entity acquiring, receiving, and purchasing the property, stock, or other assets is referred to as the buyer, and the entity disposing, conveying, and selling the assets is referred to as the seller. In Oracle Cloud, an agreement refers to a system transaction which is used to enforce the rules of a paper contract. So think MSA, SOW, et cetera. It also provides consumption and time remaining notification for that contract or a contract line. It can expose a contract to one or more requesting business units or importantly, not expose it to others. It can be used to auto-generate POs for that given contract or contract line and more. So second topic, purchase agreement types. So there's really two types, blankets and contracts. There are some other types, but these are largely the two most important and they really revolve around lines or no lines. But the most consistent challenge when implementers and or licensees are trying to understand which of these different agreement types to use for which transactions, lines or no lines is confusing. Largely, you use contract purchase agreements or CPAs when everything you want is going to be bought under that contract. And there's some reasons for that, most notably because it defaults on the rec, can't be taken off the rec, and if there's multiple, it defaults to the newest open. So if you then want different lines, goods, services, quotes, rates, buckets of money, then you want to use a BPA. And those BPA lines can be found by searching through sourcing. It's much like an item or a catalog item. So again, the two main types are blankets and contracts. A blanket allows you to define items, item attributes, discounts, a start date, links, purchase orders. You can also define notifications, maxes and mins for the amount you can spend, all using a blanket and the lines represent the different goods and services. Or you can use a contract purchase agreement where there are no lines. That is all you use and every requisition you create gets linked to that. It's called wide open. You still have mins and maxes, but not at a line or a product or a service level. It's just globally. Third topic, when are agreements created? So you can see here agreements are used in purchasing services. Oftentimes that's how you get catalogs, but they're created when you go through the sourcing process that you can see there on the bottom. Lastly, it's worth noting that agreements can be created during sourcing or contracts, but there are some definite reasons why you do not want to use sourcing when you have contracts enabled to create your agreements. For more, either contact me directly or see your consultant. Fourth topic, how are agreements created? Well, largely they're either created manually and like we said just a second ago, they can be created out of sourcing events or from contracts or contract lines. Fifth topic, who creates those agreements? That, little, that depends a little bit on where they get created from, but largely it could be requesters, buyers, or contract administrators. And you see the pathway that they initiate through a rec, then they go to a sourcing event or straight to a contract, that line goes out to an agreement. So it could be that the sourcing event goes to an agreement as well. 
Sixth topic, why are agreements created? Well, we talked a little bit about each of these. Control the business unit exposure. So I want these requesting business units to use this agreement. I do not want those two, so you can do that. You can auto-generate the orders. You can also auto-generate the requisitions, rather not auto-generate, you can auto-submit requisition lines into approval when they're linked to certain con or agreement line. You have notification. So the notification could be on consumption, consumption remaining, time, time remaining. You can have limitation, time limitation, dollars, etc. The concept of definitional items versus transactional items, BPA lines, allow you to define an item. It is not a transactional, meaning inventory item. You can apply discounts. And then this concept of linkage, which is very important. Now that everything's inside one application, you can link payment to invoice, to order, to agreement, to contract line, to requisition, etc. Okay, so let's recap. You should now understand Purchase agreements, the what, how, when, where, who, and why of purchase agreements. You should understand the two major different types, contract agreements versus blanket agreements. Still not sure? Watch it again. It's free. But if you understand the material, it's time to move on to the next lesson in this course. So that's the end of this presentation, but it doesn't have to be the end of your learning journey. There are thousands of free videos just like this one. Remember, better content, better skills, better income, better life. We want to help you get 1% better every day. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Okay, as promised, here are the five steps you can perform today to start earning free badges for your LinkedIn profile. Step one, navigate to panamir.com and either sign in or join now, it's free. Step two, in the upper left, under the Discover menu, select the course that you want to watch and get badged for. Step three, watch all of the different video lessons in that course. Step four, when it's complete, send your LinkedIn profile and the course you watched and your user ID to badges at panamir.com. And then sit back and wait for step five when we attach a badge to your LinkedIn profile.